first off, uh, tip of the cap to Adam Ray, who just got in from Arizona and hustled out here to be part of the show tonight, and uh, suggested that he needed to use the bathroom before he went on stage. And it was pointed out to him that there was a vacant bathroom right in the green room where all of us were hanging around eating quesadillas. And Adam said, no, I'm gonna go use the one in the kitchen because I'm going to destroy it. <laughs> and I thought, that's a dude. That's a dude you wanna go to war with. Because his thing is, I'd rather go shit up the bathroom that all the poor Mexicans have to use who are working here tonight than cause any strife to a white person. And I appreciate that. Speaking of that, well, Brad Williams, so this is a true story from my podcast. Uh, Brad Williams is a dwarf or midget or little person. We're gonna have to ask him what, what, what the nomenclature is. But I don't think you say dwarf anymore and I don't think you say midget anymore, but you do have to now say little person, which sounds quite a bit more demeaning to me than dwarf or midget because a little person could be a full-size person who just didn't make as much money as you and you were telling them to wash your car. But we've swapped out dwarf and midget for little person and I, it's not an upgrade. We can get into it with Brad. The worst, the worst is we swapped out prostitute and porn star with sex worker. <laughs> I have a teenage daughter. I would much rather her be a prostitute than a sex worker. <laughs> sex worker sounds like you work in an industrial park in Reseda, <laughs> and some guy looks like Ed Asner with a cigar and a clipboard is gonna come in and go, he's gonna walk into like the lunchroom and go, all right, ladies, Tea time is over. We just got a fresh pallet of cocks and they're not gonna suck themselves, so let's go. Put your hairnet on this time, Marge, let's go. You've seen the sign in the bathroom, on the clock, on the cock, here we go. So Brad's a little person and he was on my show a few months ago and this is a true story, and somebody called in and asked about the uh, sexual position of 69ing, which, you know, it's been a minute. It, it may fall under the heading of something I'll never engage in ever again. I think guys of a certain age, you know when you're driving around on a Saturday and you just stop at a stoplight and you look over and there's some guys playing a pickup basketball game at the junior high with their shirts off and you go, Never gonna do that again. <laughs> I feel the same way with 69. I don't wanna roll my ankle, miss, miss work. <laughs> but they were talking about 69 and I, I looked down at Brad, <laughs> little person. And I said, uh, I never thought about this, but uh, Brad, you ever get together with another little person and try 34 and a half? A lot of white people in Orange County, that's good. Because <laughs> I don't know if you caught this news yesterday, but Gavin Newsom has... <laughs> has full-blown AIDS, and they say he only has hours to live. <laughs> and that's the end of the joke. Gavin Newsom now has created something. You guys know the Amber Alert, right? For the, the, missing, the missing kids. Um, he now has one for black missing kids called the Ebony Alert. <laughs> now, obviously you can't, the, the Babylon Bee can't make this shit up, right? But that, it's, God's honest, they have their own alert. 
And by the way, indigenous people have their own alert too. It's called the feather alert. <laughs> feather seems a little light for those people. I don't know if you've seen any of the commercials with the elders talking about tribal gambling. Not a lot of feathers in that group. A little more dances with KFC in that tribe. Maybe an anvil would be more precise, but uh, there is the ebony alert now. And first off, does everyone need their own thing? Because that feels like a step backwards. Like, oh, Gavin Newsom's not gonna rest until everyone gets their own drinking fountain. <laughs> but I heard about this yesterday. I tried to keep an open mind but then immediately had a racist thought. Because <laughs> that's me. I, I wouldn't say, I'm obviously, I don't think of myself as, as racist, but I'm on the spectrum, you know? <laughs> I have thoughts, I guess. I was thinking to myself, you know, every one of these Amber Alerts, you know what the story is, it's not, it's not a serial killer in an unmarked van, it's always the dad. The dad got screwed on custody and the divorce, and the dad got the kid for the weekend, and the dad never returns the kid after keeping the kid for the weekend. And that's 80% of this is just dads with their kids. And I thought, if we're going black kids, we can eliminate that threat. <laughs> now we're down to just a... Too much, too much, too soon. And they do, the, do this all the time. By the way, I, I researched the Amber, the girl that this, with her namesake on this uh, alert before I came out here, because I want to do my homework. You know, if you're gonna get up there and tell racist jokes, you want to be <laughs> well informed. Uh, the real Amber uh, never made it home. Stabbed in the neck multiple times. Gone. So maybe we should pick a new name. You know what I mean? Because this is not the result we're looking for. <laughs> Slightly more promising name would be good. But uh, there is this thing. I remember when uh, Gabby Petito, remember her? Got to her boyfriend that went glamping and then she was gone and she was that skinny, skinny blonde chick. And that last, we're, America stopped and looked for her for like three days, and then at some point, the Yentas from The View had to get involved, and <laughs> all the bitches on, on MSNBC, and they're like, if this was a black woman, we wouldn't be looking for her. If this is a woman of color, we wouldn't be looking for her. And I wanna tell all these people, we don't really break it down by race, you know, if she was black, if she was white, or blonde, whatever. We look for everyone, we just don't look for fat chicks. <laughs> fat chick's gone for three weeks. Husband answers the door. Wife's been missing for three weeks. Have you tried the Del Taco? Maybe she's walking it off, you know what I mean? I, this could be a good thing. Sad admittance today. I don't know, I don't even know what this is, but I'm, I'm gonna share it with you. Uh, I am now hooked like, like heroin on the mini short sock. I can no longer do the full length sock anymore. It's too big a battle. There's too many calories being burned. I tried tonight. I'm out of the mini socks. All I got is the fucking long socks. And I just like pulled a groin on my sofa struggling to get a full. I have, it took me 20 minutes to get this fucking sock on. And then I realized what a colossal pussy I've become. And then what colossal pussies we've all become because Regular socks are now a bridge too far, and then I start thinking about it. For a lot of people, socks in general are too much. They need Crocs, 
And now every commercial I see on TV is Howie Long saying, you don't have to tie your shoes. You can just be lowered into them by your manservant. And they start thinking about the 70s when we had energy and zest and, and vim and vigor. Not that we need both of those words, but the point is, is guys wore socks that went up to their fucking knees all the time. Every football coach I had had socks that went up to his nutsack. <laughs> I think you can judge where society is going by the size of the sock. That's what I'm saying. All right, see any other racist jokes I wrote down here? <laughs> oh, here's one. It's not that racist. We're gonna have fun tonight because I sat around last night and I started thinking about really old jokes I used to tell when I first did stand up years and years ago when I was, you know, 21, 22. And I thought it'd be fun. So I told uh, Adam and Brad, little person, I said, uh, think of some of your old jokes from your old open mic days. Come up with two, three, four of them. And let's all tell our horrible, embarrassing, never want to say that joke again from 20 years ago. And I thought, I thought that would be fun. The, uh, the thing I wanted to say was that uh, I was thinking about all this COVID craziness and the insanity of COVID and the science of COVID. And I know you guys are probably on the same page I'm on with this, but America should have just rejected all of it the moment they heard this phrase. <laughs> Mask up in between bites. <laughs> Everyone should have went, oh, well then fuck this. <laughs> this is now a clown show. Masking up in between bites? There is no, now there is no science and then I was thinking to myself, has that phrase ever been uttered in human history? Mask up in between bites. Like, where would that be? When would someone even need to say that? And then I remembered, yeah, I've heard it before. I was at a clan barbecue. <laughs> I, we, I, we didn't want to be recognized, but we didn't want to get barbecue sauce on the flap. So that's the only other time and the only real good application for that phrase of masking up in between bites. All right, you guys ready to meet the stars of tonight? Well, they need no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. Adam Ray is back there somewhere. Yeah. Brad Williams is back there somewhere. Yeah. There he is. The bigger ovation for the smaller guy. I'm a local. It happens. <laughs> I'm from here. Oh, God. You see, now I always do the thing where everyone holds their breath because they're like, holy shit, can he climb in that chair? This is going to be like, this is going to be a thing. No, I'm, I'm a fucking dwarf Sherpa. I can get up, all right? It's fine. But you guys think that's impressive. Fly with Brad and watch him fucking throw his bag up into the oh, overhead compartment. Oh my God. Oh. It is like seeing Cirque du Soleil. It, it's Cirque du Miget. It's Cirque du Miget. That's it's what it is. It's essentially become the Highland Games. Yeah. You trying to get your backpack into the overhead storage. Yeah, that's my people's version of American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> it's funny. Coming this fall to NBC, <laughs> dwarves doing basic shit. <laughs> the people. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I flew with Brad, I literally, he goes, he goes, he goes, keep your eye on the rest of the passengers. I was like, why? He's like, just trust me. And I literally see Brad get down, he's got his bag, and then he stands up, and I see all these people start to go, uh, do you want me, do, can I? And Brad goes, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. And he looks at me and he goes, watch. And then he fucking, I don't know if you put it in your legs, I can't remember how you <laughs> threw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just hear this one guy go, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it was a pilot. I have very powerful thighs. <laughs> It's been said a million times. Very powerful thighs. You know, it's funny. People hold their breath when Brad tries to get onto a bar stool, and then they hold their breath when I try to get off a bar stool. 
to be fair, when I get off of a bar stool, everyone's like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah. is this where he dies? <laughs> like, cause, yeah, cause, yeah, because if I, if I jump off that stool, everyone's just like, no, Brad, you have so much to live for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. That's, <laughs> a, that's equivalent to one of us jumping off a five story building. Yeah, people, exactly. Just to put it into context. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Good to be here. careers going. Theater tours, the yeah. whole country. It's yeah, February 10th, I'll be at the theater at the Ace Hotel. Let's so go. Uh, I'm doing that one. So there, there, there you go, Los Angeles. And uh, go, yeah, five people will be there. All the rest of you, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing theaters in this next year. So I would say that buy your tickets early because I don't have screens. So if not, you're in the back, you're fucked. You're not gonna see shit. You see a bouncing head. Like, I think there's noise coming out of that. Uh, do you guys, did you guys figure out some of your early, weaker, more embarrassing jokes from oh, yeah. early in your career? Too many to pick from. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny how- Last week, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's so funny how when you just get so uh, far removed from those days, and Brad, you can attest to this, like, and, and Adam, you probably as well, where you, even if you've, it's been two or five years, you'll revisit some bits and be like, oh, I now have a better perspective or point of view on how to maybe turn that into something special, but more often than not, it's dog shit. Um, I, 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 I like, for me, you guys are younger and newer. Like for me, I had to dip back 30 years like plus yeah. because I started off trying to do stand up, was no good at it, had no success, and then got into sketch and then got into radio and then got into TV and then got back into stand up later. But these jokes for me are 35 years old. Wow. Wow. I'm 39, so <laughs> Not to make you feel old or anything. Uh, in regular or dwarf? Oh, that's the dwarf years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's which why means you ask. I, yeah, which means I got about four years left. So buy your tickets, everybody. <laughs> oh my God, oh, that's a I'll, great promo. I'll, I'll just say, buy your tickets. Buy I don't your know tickets how now. Much. I don't know how long. The little heart doesn't last as long as you guys. <laughs> no way. See, You're some fine. of you guys are laughing. Some of you guys are like, wait, is this, is, is 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 it real? Is this? I'll, s- I'll set up my first one. Okay. So I'm driving my DeSoto down to the malt shop. <laughs> Hot. Listen to my eight-track tape. With my raccoon coat on. <laughs> uh, my jokes were, I, I look back, I, I winced. It, it's like any chick in here who's over 50 and spent any time in New Jersey, Find a picture of yourself from 1986, you will never stop vomiting. That fucking hair, full, 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 full There's apparently hair. a lot of women that fit that category because they went silent yes. for that one. That, that was, was a split response. That was I've just ever like, how one. fucking dare you? My friend Donna looked hot. <laughs> all right, do you guys want to try one? Yeah, all right. This is literally the first joke I ever wrote. And uh, how I got into, like, this story made me think, I think I, I, I might be able to do stand-up comedy. Uh, I was uh, coming out of an elevator one time, and there was a guy there, and I don't know what his ethnic background was, but uh, he, he, he was wearing a turban, and the doors opened up, and he yelled at me. He went, oh, my God, it's a demon. Get away from me, you little demon. This is a legit true story. It would probably get me canceled today. Uh, but yeah, like he just he started yelling at me, it's a demon. And here's how I knew that I could be a comedian. I didn't cry. I didn't question every decision. I didn't, I, I didn't reach this guy and say, damn you, God, for making me this way. I just ran after him going, <laughs> like that. And I chased the fucker down the street. And that's a legitimate true story. I think you can still use that. I think I could still yeah. use that. Yeah, I, I, this experiment is not going to work if yeah. the material is strong. <laughs> okay. I, I have a second one that's very basic. Okay. Yeah, how about that time you fucked that cat? That was oh, funny. Yeah, that yeah. was a good one. Yeah. That was uh, a weird bit. Yeah, that was good. Uh, Wait, Brad, we got to tell him about the time when that? I went on the road with Brad when we first got going and we went to uh, Pachanga uh, in Temecula. And uh, remember, there was a uh, convention, a Japanese businessman convention. Yes! Holy and, shit! And, wait, earlier in the day, I'll tell part of it, you can finish yeah. the rest. 
And so all these, uh, Brad and I start walking around. He had gotten up early, uh, unbeknownst to me, to speak uh, at this uh, convention. Yeah. And so uh, we're walking around the casinos, farting around, uh, killing time. And all these Japanese men just start rubbing Brad's head. Yeah. We're walking through the casino, and they didn't stop. It was like just drive by, like, oh, and they just rub his <laughs> yeah. head. Yeah, because... Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? And Brad didn't say anything. That's what was the key of the story. He just was, I was like, after the fifth uh, head rub, I go, I, I said to one of the guys, I go, you can't do that! And then Brad was like, oh, it's fine. And I was like, why is it fine? Because <laughs> earlier in the day, they, they, they needed someone to speak to this, to, to, to this convention. So they're like, well, we have a comedian. Let's get the comedian to do it. Yeah, because when you think Japanese businessmen, you're like, yeah, get the white dwarf from Orange <laughs> County. That, that's totally relatable. Anyway, so I go on stage. I'm starting to tell my jokes. These guys, they don't speak English. They're not laughing at my jokes, no. okay? So I have to panic, and all I do is I say, did you know that if you rub a dwarf's head, it's good luck at the casino? I had no and, idea. Oh. I had no idea he said that. And fucking A, that joke killed that <laughs> night. And, but then the problem, I just did it in the moment because I wanted a reaction. <laughs> Little did I know for the rest of my three-day stint at the fucking Pachanga, <laughs> every time... Fucking Hop Singh walk by, he would just be like, <laughs> like he would just do that the whole time. Yeah. And by the way, not good dwarf etiquette. I fucking hate it when people touch my head. I yeah. can't stand the shit. But yeah, they were doing it, and then like the non-Japanese people. That's the thing. If you see a Japanese guy do something, you're just like, that's his culture. Like, like you just automatically do it. So th th there's a bunch of people at Pachanga that weekend. That, that they just think, yeah, dwarves are good luck in Japanese culture. So, oh, yeah, there was like a fat guy in a tank top that was like, what does this Japanese guy know that I don't know? And then he tried to rub your head. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then the one guy that blew me in the bathroom, but that was a completely different yeah. story. But that was a different day, yeah. Yeah. Different superstition. Adam, do you have uh, a story of what? a very early joke you're sort of embarrassed sure. by now? The two, the two first ones, the first one, uh, you know, they tell you, like, write about, you know, what you know. Try to be as personal as possible. And so, uh, you know, my folks split when I was, what, eight? Thanks for bringing it up. And, um, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'll do a funny joke about uh, having one parent. And so I get on stage, I go, man, this uh, show feels a lot like my Little League games, because my dad's not here. <laughs> and that's about the response it got uh, 16 years ago. Just everyone going, oh, that's sad. The first joke I remember making, and I'll get to the onstage stuff later, but when I was about eight, I was with my Hungarian grandfather. Hot. And <laughs> Laszlo Gorog. Yeah. And uh, he was making goulash, because that's what they do, you know? And I was like eight years old. And he mentioned goulash a few times, and I said, what does goulash mean? And he said, well, in Hungarian, goulash, it means cowboy, like cowboy stew. So goulash essentially means cowboy. And I said, oh, so when you were a kid, did you grow up playing goulash in Indians? <laughs> For a fucking eight-year-old, not, not That's very too, funny. That's pretty good. Not yeah. too shabby. Good play on words. Right? Pretty fucking good. All right. I'll give you one that bombed every night. Please. Uh, this is... This is my, like my third, third or fourth joke, I said, uh, do you know what it's like to go into a Starbucks as a midget and order a tall coffee? <laughs> See, not as good yeah, as the demon one. Yeah. I got another one. Fire away. Uh, I was studying abroad in uh, London, and I, uh, I, uh, it was when Michael Jackson had come out with uh, a CD of number one hits. Mm -hmm. And so I get up there at this open mic, and I go, man, I just bought this CD, fired up. It's got all of MJ's classics. Uh, black or white, beat it, and uh, my favorite track that's big in Germany, okay, I admit it, I fucked the kid in the ass. <laughs> that's a way better response than I got in the UK, so thank you so much. Ego boosted. Well done, see? That joke had legs. Yeah. And I'd heard one British guy in the back go, ha! <laughs> <laughs> There's got, uh, all right, here's a joke that used to work, Yeah. and then... I was at a, doing an open mic at, a, I think, an improv in Santa Monica, California, that doesn't exist mm. anymore. There was an improv out there, and I, I did it, and then another comedian said it was his joke, 
And then we got into a super loud argument, like by the side of the stage yeah. over whose joke it was, because it had, it's the, when you hear the punchline, you'll go, oh yeah, a, the, million people must have thought sure, of this yeah. joke. But, but you can tell me if you've ever heard it, because okay. I, I still have never heard a comedian do this joke. So the joke, and again, this is, you know, 30 some odd years ago, and God knows how many bottles of Cuddy Sark and how many concussions. So I, it's not really fresh, but the joke was basically, there's AA, you know, the Alcoholics Anonymous. They got, they got that for, for the alcoholics. Some guy just booed, <laughs> somebody <laughs> no. booed AA. Was it you? <laughs> Fuck okay. you, trying to make your life better. It's, Je <laughs> it's Jeff Bezos' poor younger brother. <laughs> oh, it's Terry Bezos. It's Terry Bezos. Ah, oh, I remember him from Dateline. <laughs> <laughs> How was the iced tea, Terry? Yeah. Yes. Jim Hansen said you're free to leave, right? <laughs> or what's his name? Chris. Chris Hansen. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Jim, no, Jim Hansen Jim, was the Muppet guy. That's the yeah. Muppet guy. Yeah, he, Close. He tried, yeah the, he tried to put I his hand you. up his ass. <laughs> Similar. I mean, that's why he was there. So anyway, the joke was... Uh, if Jeff Dunham molested me, no one would ever believe it. Okay, that's... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. No, and like, he's got the best defense ever. It's like, yeah, Mr. Dunham, you molested Brad Williams. I was working. I got him confused for Mr. Peanut. Oh my God. All right. All right. He's a good friend. The Take us back. He's a dear friend. <laughs> Take us back. All right. The joke, and I'll, 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 again, I haven't said it in 33 years, but it, it was um, so there's AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. And then the, there's. Um, CA, that's Cocaine Anonymous, and they have uh, also one for people who are addicted to sex, fucking A. Funny, didn't Pretty see it coming. Should it, yeah. it, <laughs> well, good. first off, it should be called fucking A, not yeah. SA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. SA sounds like oh, fucking Mexicans calling their brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up with you, SA? Yeah. <laughs> And then there's Canadian Anonymous, AA. <laughs> yes! Yeah, yeah. Wow. Fucking Someone's A! Someone's a dad. Yeah! Fucking A. I, get, I got a four-year-old. That's what works in the house. So th that, that, that's the most obvious joke in the world, yeah. and I've never heard anyone make it except for that one comedian who and said that And you and Carlos his. Mencia have been friends oh, ever since. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He's my friend! I used to open for the guy. Yeah, SA. Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of this notion was based on hearing a poison song from I think it's written I told Chris to write it down yeah, let's see from 19 oh god 1988 or sorry 86 oh. a poison their first chart topping song or made it into the top 10 yeah was from 1986 it's called talk dirty to me and it's fucking horrible and it's everything I hate about hair bands and that era in music and, and for those of you who can't remember we'll, we'll, we'll play some of it I didn't realize until hearing it just now at the drive-in in the old man's Ford he's basically like hey I'm gonna finger you in your dad's car yes that's the lyric but yeah. it would have been better if you would have said that <laughs> so then I was thinking to myself tell you're dead <laughs> This song is Michael Jackson said the same thing. Coming up <laughs> on this song's coming up on 40 years old. Wow. Right? right. Now, poor poison has to play this piece of shit on every concert they play. Otherwise, someone's gonna throw a chair at them. But Brett Michaels was like 23 and high when he wrote this piece of shit with the lyrics there like a, a nine-year-old with a learning disorder wrote it with a brick hat on a piece of bark. That's how fucking bad these lyrics are. And I was thinking, what if you had to go out knowing what you know now as a comedian and tell the shitty joke you came up oh, with man. 40 years ago when you couldn't write a joke. Yeah. yeah and bummer. he has to do it and Poison has to do it every single concert. They have to play talk, talk Dirty Me. And it's not even a choice, but would you say, like if you were in the band and you're now 58 years old, would you go, 
I wrote that song when I was 23. It's a piece of shit. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to do it. Thank I mean, God we're comedians. Because yeah. that, that would just be me going out here and saying the word retarded after every joke. And that, see, you guys already got uneasy. That didn't work. It's all right. We park in the same spaces. Uh, they do. He's not lying. They we, do. we took the same buses to school. <laughs> were, the, were the same helmets when you ate cereal. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> All right, you guys want to play a little blah, blah, blah. 1,000%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's always a crowd. All right, please, so sir. bigger moment in history before we get to blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. When Michael Jordan picks up a basketball for the first time or when Brett Michaels sees his first bandana and goes, holy shit. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Question, yeah, because right? he's been wearing that thing for all 40 of those years since this song has been yeah, coming out. Yeah, he made bandanas bandana. cool, no? <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Said nobody ever. Right. <laughs> right. But it's, like, but, but, it's like, but it's like, there are moments in musical history. It's like the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show, right. the uh, mud fights at, uh, at uh, what the fuck, uh, New York. Woodstock, thank you. Jesus Christ. I don't know why. I, blanked out there uh, and then but now I ruined the joke because I couldn't think of Woodstock god damn it this you, joke no and that was the first joke I wrote what I just said that that that's what it was what Woodstock from Charlie Brown you guys kick, sleep in the same house right kick save and a butte <laughs> you brought up Michael Jordan yes I brought it? Michael Jordan up earlier today and I don't know if you know these people who Get no Large black men? No. They get no, they don't get metaphors, they don't get examples. Oh. Like there was like, I was talking about a funny person who comes from a funny family and uh, I don't want to call him out by name, but is not that funny. Okay. Should be funnier. Okay. And then I say to the person, this is like if Michael Jordan's son couldn't make a layup. Mm, yeah. And then she said, Michael Jordan's son didn't play in the league. And I said, I know, bitch, I'm making a... The only thing... She was like, well, he didn't play, so it's a shit... Exa I, no, I said, no, he can't hit a layup, is yeah. what I'm saying. The only thing Not Michael that he was Jordan... on the Pelicans and got cut. Yeah, the only thing Michael Jordan and his son have in common is they both played with a Pippin. <laughs> Three people got that joke. Oh, got if it. you know why that's funny, holy shit, that's funny. You might have to explain Ma it. Michael Jordan's son is it's now banging. dating Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. Yes. That is absolutely true. There's yes. got to be a whole new documentary oh, out my after God. called The Last Last Dance. Or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, the Pippen Pants? I don't know. <laughs> and she's only doing it to piss a off thousand Pippen, percent. right? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. there's so many, so many people out she there. Could that be. would be like if me and my wife split up and she starts blowing Dinklage. Yes. She doesn't have a thing for midgets. <laughs> She's doing it just to get back at me like I wanted a more successful dwarf cock. Uh-oh, your move, Peter. <laughs> He's watching at home. Let me tell you about Just Thrive. You have so much stress. Sometimes you just want to hit the pause button and breathe. Just Calm from Just Thrive. Well, they can help. Just Calm's all-natural blend of mood-lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing B vitamins helps you take back control and feel like your most cool, calm, and collected self. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little as four weeks. Uh, or you can do the Just Drive probiotic. That's what I take every day, a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat and gut it lets your gut produce serotonin, more serotonin, which is your happy hormone, plus it supports better sleep. It's just, and now the science is in. It's the gut controlling the mind, not the mind controlling the gut, and you gotta get your gut right. Uh, I know Tina Anderson, she came in here, we had dinner with her and her husband. They're very passionate about this product, and it's because it works. It's just thrive, right Dawson? With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. Your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. 
over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. All right, should we do some blah, blah, blog? Yeah. It's time for Blah, Blah, Blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. Dinklage does sound like a dwarf name. It does. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like when his friends call him Dink. Dinky. Is yeah. Small. Yeah. Dinklage. Ledge. Like if it's like if you had a really shitty junior high basketball coach or football coach, like a P, like a junior high PE coach, yeah. Yeah. and you're on the short side. Yeah. But your real last name was Drinklage. He'd call you Dinklage yeah. and yeah. then snap the towel at your ass, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also Peter Dinklage. Not only sounds like you're small, but it sounds like your wang is small. <laughs> Yeah, it's a so double that's a situation. Fucking, yeah, they should have thought that one out. His okay. cousin, Dick Tiny. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, you want to do a little blah, blah, Great blah? Name. There you go. All right, so this is a, uh, a birthday tweet. He'll say it out loud. Oh, little Mrs. 42, look at you leaning into the moonbeams to recharge and radiate a purposeful, glowing heart. I am very proud of my faith, resilience, and strength over the last four decades. Everything in my life that has or hasn't happened yet makes turning 42 very exciting because I know what it takes personally to remain inside of determined patience. I know myself and I do love her very much. I know my purpose and I must say that, ladies and gents, I am equipped to waltz within every dream I own confidently. I'm humbled and honored to finally be my own best friend. Okay, 42, time to rock and roll. Honey boo boo. <laughs> You know, when, his, when historians <laughs> look at this chapter in this country, because in the past, like when they, when they do those Ken Burns docs, yeah. they, they have all these letters from Civil War yeah. soldiers written back, you know, my dearest Gertrude, and then you hear the fiddle in the background. Right. I bet they had a guy fiddling while they wrote, yeah, actually. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, the hands Bob, the... I got to write yeah. a letter here. Can you bring the Colin fiddle in? Fiddle. All right, come fiddle My dearest me. Gertrude, the right. hands of oppression were around my neck today, but I fought them off valiantly. Right. It was all scholarly, wonderful, and had yeah. nothing to do with them. There's no. no, like, dear Gertrude, I'm celebrating my dirty 30. My <laughs> cock is super wide. I'm a Gemini. I'm really, I'm really trying to eat, pray, love this year. You right. Know? All we're going to have of this portion in our history is a bunch of fucking tool celebrities writing love letters to themselves. Yeah. I don't know what's worse, the tweet or the fact that she used 47 emojis after the tweet. All right, well, let's find out who it could be. Wait, can I make a guess? Okay. Gotta... I think this is Britney Spears before she recorded the knife video. Ah. I think she was fucking hopped up on something. Oh, you saw that video, right? Have, have you... I mean, she looked like an IHOP waitress auditioning for the cast I'll... of Mortal Kombat. I'll tell you what bot... <laughs> And then she was just like, fuck it. And then she dropped her phone and fucking all those emojis went off. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, what's, what's more, I'll tell you what's way more disturbing than out of control Britney Spears with the Benny Hanna routine. Yeah, the knife work it, was phenomenal. I'll, I'll, the dance was as a, as a former contractor, it's the fucking tile. That fucking bad 80s burnt brown bullshit with the unsanded brown grout in it, it looks like shit. Yeah. She's a fucking multimillionaire. And she has shitty 80s tile in her fucking living room. Watch the video. Look down. I couldn't even see her face. I was like looking at the grout joints going, fuck. So funny. Should have gone with a sanded grout. Those joints are 
Way more than three sixteenths. Please tell me you watch porn in the exact same way. I stare at the grout lines. You're like, the fucking floor's dirty. Oh, no, the porn. I don't just limit it to grout lines. I'm like, the base shoe. They should have used base shoe when they used quarter round. Why do you have suede on that couch? You know cum doesn't flow then, well on suede. By the way, is this even a real house? Because you got French doors there and no tea astrical, okay? I can see daylight pouring right through the fucking crack, and those reveals look like shit. So this is probably just in some warehouse in fucking Van Nuys. I don't even think we're at this bitch's condo. Well, now you sound like my wife. Oh, the... <laughs> They're using finger-jointed pine for the door stop. It's like she's here with it's me. It's a fucking shit show. The reveals on the base and the case are for shit. The crown molding's got huge fucking gaps in it. I, it's, I don't even know where to start. You could be speaking Swahili. I would understand more. Big fucking eight-inch can lights from the 80s. I can't, I can't watch porn anymore. You're I am right. not a man. It is funny the amount of things people critique with porn. I know some uh, dudes that, like, like, for me, I'm like, hey, man, boobs, butts, what do you got, Google? But some people are like, I need 15 storylines. I have a friend in San Diego. He's like, dude, I need, like, you know, stepdad, fuck stepmom until stepson comes home early from Iraq, you know, <laughs> and then blow, and then fights, you know, stepdad for stepmom, and then stepmom blows stepson in hot tub, then they order Grubhub and watch the movie Stepmom with Julia Rock. It's like, you know, it's yeah. just too long. I've seen that one. It's good, yeah. though. I it is good. I, I'm not going to knock it. I don't it's trust It's 55 minutes guys. long because yeah. it's just the end of Stepmom. It's pretty good. Well, so here's a question for those of you who are familiar with this Britney Spears video. All her video feature horrible tile. That's, that's number one. Oh. It's Let not it. large scale. It's, it's just weird... Tan brown, 18 by 18, 80 shit. So Max that's the first. You gotta find but a picture of this fucking tile. There's a big, there's a, a bigger atrocity in tile, which is the UN. Mm. That jade weird tile green. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? The UN tile looks like you're just at a shitty 80s restaurant where they had some sort of Southwest theme and it just didn't, some Georgia O'Keeffe shit, and it didn't work out. You guys know UN Tile? <laughs> that is peak for that joke. It, it, it is the market for that. Wait, who, we're gonna, we're gonna size up this crowd. More people here know Britney Spears Tile <laughs> than UN Tile? Cause that's a fucking tell. <laughs> you guys are intellectual lightweights. I may cut this, sh this show. <laughs> There That's some shitty ass tile with brown grout, beige, tan, and brown. So if you got to interview Britney Spears, which would be a good get, your first yeah. question wouldn't be, hey, popping off at 17 and, and paving the way for pop stars during the 90s and 2000s. I mean, one of the biggest recording artists of all time, uh, a residency in Vegas, you, you know, touring the world. No, your first question would be like, what the fuck's going on with that floor, bitch? Well, my, listen, I wouldn't offend, I would not offend the lady, but yeah. I would ask some poignant questions, like, <laughs> raise foundation or are you on a slab? <laughs> if you're on a slab, we can pop that shit off with a chipping hammer real easy, and I'll just get some thin set, and I'll fix this shit up lickety split. <laughs> now, if you're on a raised foundation, we gotta put down Hardy backer, bitch. <laughs> You know? yeah. I, would I think those are the lyrics to her third album, actually. Yeah. All right, this tile is for shit, though, right? I mean, it's a multi-millionaire. It's a multi-millionaire. She's not a substitute school teacher from Reseda. This is a multi-millionaire on shit 80s tile. And those are some big-ass knives, by the way. That's some fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme weaponry. Oh, yeah. That's that, no, right now she looks like a villain from, like, the Double Dragon video game in the early 90s. So also, do you think reference. this is her response to NSYNC uh, dropping their first single in 20 years? <laughs> She's like, oh, really, Justin? Well, how about this? <laughs> you think her lawyer would coach her up, too? Like, now that you're yeah. emancipated, yeah. it's all good, but stay away from videotaping yourselves with cutlery yeah. in your underpants <laughs> with a fucking 50,000-yard stare. Don't and a question bit of my spittle. art. <laughs> Show me did that email. Did you find the UN? Oh, the oh come on, Chris. You got to find the UN. We got to coach up this crowd. All right. Uh, the UN shit, first off, you know, 
Menachem Begin was giving a speech there in 1971. Same fucking time. That's yeah. not a real name. <laughs> <laughs> Menachem Begin. Menachem Bacon sounds like a, a new kind of bacon they serve at Denny's. <laughs> All right, Boutros Boutros Galli was there. <laughs> ah, there you go. I know that one. All right, find All right. that tile. Can you find it? That's yeah. some Home Depot. That shit is in the discount bin at Home Depot. Grout lines are for shit. Again, they went with a non-sanded grout. I don't appreciate that. There's one by one. If this shit was in your stepdaughter's pool house and you hated that bitch, you would still replace it. The biggest decisions in the world are taking place in this facility with some of the, the most tile. prestigious spokespeople on the planet and the leaders of the free world and they have to stand in front of this tile abortion. Yeah. I can't hear a word they're saying, by the way. They're talking about freeing Palestine or Israel, retaliating, and I'm just going, what the fuck with the tile? What is up with that tile? I heard the same rant on Rogan. Uh. <laughs> it does look like the lobby of a Holiday Inn Express. It's, it's, yeah, it's a lobby of a bad 80s hotel, right? Yeah. Okay, that's all. That's all I got on tile. Now we can move on with this game. Let's move on. Let's shift gears. All right. Who's yeah. this tweet? Oh, okay. We'll see this. We'll well, see I guess this it's bread. <laughs> you said Honey Boo Boo? Yeah, I'm going Honey Boo Boo. Oh, where the phone. fuck is Honey Boo Boo? I'll give you guys three, three choices here. Okay. All Nobody right. else concerned about that? Is All it right. tennis superstar Serena Williams? All right. Oof. The singer of 1999's I Want to Love You Forever, Jessica Simpson. Oh, don't get me started on her tile. <laughs> she or, went with a subway tile with a staggered... Okay. Sorry. Or EGOT winner, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, Ooh. man. Oh, now, are they all 42 confirmed? Confirmed. Oh. Yeah. Confirmed 42. All right. They all love themselves sure. quite a bit. Yeah. You got to. Oh, Jennifer man. Hudson lost a bunch of weight. Sure. Yes. And when chicks lose a bunch of weight... They, they go right to Twitter. ...and feel real fucking good about themselves. Uh, sure. They, yeah, diatribes online. Right, right. About so, the journey. The journey, because yeah. it's all about the journey. What it took to get there. Some quote that's usually like, I mean, I have a friend that posts provocative pics. She'll post like, she'll be in like a, a you know, a, a, a very provocative bikini and the quote on the beach says like, you know, after the, you weather the storm, the spirit of the heart stays true. Right, like, yeah, that's right. what I was fucking thinking. Thanks yeah. for having the courage to say it. And by the way, it. can I say after something? After you post the, 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 this photo, the vein in my cock starts flowing. Yeah. That, that, that's what it should be. Or a girl be. post a picture of her tits and be like, we gotta conserve water. You're like, what? <laughs> I'm just thinking about milk. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say this? All the obnoxious, self-involved blowhards who write all this Are you trying to give us a seizure? What's yeah. happening yeah. right here? Right. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh, We're trying God. to get the picture back. Please don't react. Many people are, oh, God. Many people are listening in their home. I was this close to smoking weed. I'm so glad I didn't tonight. I would be freaking the fuck out right now. I feel like that's what Bill Gates thinks a rave is. <laughs> All right. For people who are listening at home. <laughs> I play to the audience. Who outnumber <laughs> this group who doesn't even know what fucking Britney Spears tiles look like. Uh, we're having some um, uh, technical spastic difficulties. technical difficulties. I, it's, it's, Wait, who's that guy? It's almost like. This is the first right. time ever a white guy has helped an Asian with electronics. <laughs> By the way... And the award for joke of the night so far goes yeah, to Brad Williams. That's right. Racist and topical. Yeah. Uh, 80 <laughs> seconds ago, I said, remember, people are listening at the home, at their home and in their car and have no context, and then Adam goes, and who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, uh, we got... The screen is out, but that's all right. We will persevere. So, we need it. Now. So, 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 so you think the weight loss, because then if it's weight loss, uh, Jessica Simpson was like tiny as heck, then she got larger, but now she's tiny as heck again. Mm -hmm. So that, that I, I, think, I think that's a wild Right, too. but she spent the vast amount of her formative years having everyone want to fuck her. Yes. Whereas Jennifer Hudson did not have that. Ah. And that's what'll scramble a woman's mind. Well, how about Serena? How much tennis pussy are you getting? Oh, I'm 
not enough man for yeah. her. And I will, I will say that. I don't think you could take that on. No. Immediately. Yeah. No. I, I, I think we'd not, all agree. Yeah. I could not take that no. on. We don't possess the necessary equipment. I don't have enough upper body strength. No, you no. would double fault your way all to the butthole. Yeah. Like, our position, if you want to do it, is I lay on the ground and pretend to be dead. <laughs> Uh, on my stomach, yeah, by the way, on yeah. my stomach, and then... While another more capable <laughs> man comes in and fucks you. Right, it's a cuckolding position. Absolutely. Yeah, or you can mount me, yeah. but that's all I got. You can mount me is the last thing you say before that's you black right, out. That's yeah. right, So, and you were talking about all those stupid, vapid aphorisms that all the yeah. people make now, which is funny. So they say nothing, and they say it all day, every day. But if one of those people walked into like a tire rotation place and went to use the bathroom and they had the poster of an eagle that said, you know, in order to achieve first you must soar, they'd go, look at this bullshit. Yeah. And they would walk out and make fun of it. Yes. All right, and let's hope they never start their inspirational poster line. So the names again, Chris? We have uh, Serena Williams, Jessica Simpson, or Jennifer Hudson. Uh, I'm going Jennifer Hudson. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Jessica Simpson. I don't hear too much from Serena or Jennifer Hudson, so I'm go. I'm going Jessica Simpson based on her. Is this tuna or is this fish? Comment from yeah. Is this tuna or is this chicken from fucking newlyweds back in the day? I used to watch that, and yeah. I stopped fucking watching it because she did that whole thing in her kitchen and the bullnose on the counter. <laughs> The fucking grouch joints were all over the fucking road. I'm going Jessica Simpson. You gotta use a decent sealer if you're gonna use tile as, as on your countertop. That's all I'm saying. Nick Lachey All right, forever. you're going, what do you, what do you got, Adam? Um, let's see, so it's, who is it now? It's Serena, Jessica, and uh, uh, Jennifer. Jennifer. I'm gonna phone a friend. I'm gonna call a, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna call a Thai bamboo bistro and see, uh, <laughs> See what they think. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. They know. This better fucking work. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, quick question. First of all, you guys uh, are open right now, yeah? Uh, we are closing in five minutes. Okay. Perfect. I got plenty of time for a question that doesn't matter. Um, first of all, you guys got uh, you got Chow Mein still rocking and rolling tonight, yeah? I'm sorry. Okay. Here we go. So. Um, <laughs> So Jennifer Hudson, Jessica Simpson, or Serena Williams, who do you think would post about their weight loss journey on Twitter? Uh, I don't understand what you said, sir. So Jen, that, fuck, because I'm white? All right, so uh, <laughs> Jennifer Hudson, uh, Serena Williams, or Jessica Simpson, uh, who, who do you think would post on Twitter about their weight loss journey? They're all 42. Uh, I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't follow on those. Do you know who Jennifer Hudson is? All right. She's got an EGOT. Tell her she's got an EGOT. She has an EGOT. Tell her, tell her she used to eat a lot. She's a restaurant. They might know her. Oh, man. What? Oh, I crossed the line? <laughs> all right. All that shit. All right, now, I'm going to go no, with no, okay. It's I'm not a personal weight loss journey. It's just a journey. Yeah. I added the weight loss. I think that's what confused her. All right, so we all picked a separate person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The all blog right. belongs to Jessica Simpson. Brad. Oh, Brad, for the win. Chicken of the sea. <laughs> All right, the next tweet. Now that virtually every vaccinated person has contracted the engineered COVID-19 virus, Ooh. the jig is pretty much up. As an election interference scam, COVID is done. Okay. Just yesterday, the Biden gang tested our emergency broadcast system. What's the new gambit going to be? Guesses? Probably another my pillow. <laughs> you can use it to to, to 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 beat up your best friend when he fucks your wife. I don't know. Is uh, it? It sounds like Lindell. Could be Lindell. Could be oh. Ted. Oh. Is it from Hercules' legendary journeys? Kevin Sorbo. Could be Sorbo. The Motor Sorbo. City Madman, Ted Nugent. Mm. Or award-winning actor and the producer of Oppenheimer, James Woods. Very fuck kill, huh? Oh, man. Oh, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is a true God. MFK. How did, like... <laughs> All right. I don't know how to judge this one. This is well, a... there, there was no mention of any guns or ammunition. Right, I think, right. I think Ted 
fit, fit, fits that into just about any any fucking tweet. Yeah. So I don't know. I What's don't Sorbo know. tweeting about? <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, What's a classic Sorbo tweet? Well, remember it, me? I was from I, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys. Okay. okay. I, it's it's not smart enough for James Woods. Totally. His stuff's a little Wacky. more I- interesting yeah. than this. I like James Woods, but this is a little tinfoil hatty, yeah. Yeah. I think, for even him. Um, I'm going Sorbo okay. on, my on this one. Yeah. yeah. All right, you're going Sorbo. Sor- Sorbo, it just sounds like a fat Mexican wrestler, doesn't it? it does. Now entering the ring, Sorbo! Versus Rey <laughs> Mysterio Jr., Sorbo! <laughs> yes, and his manager, Chura. <laughs> I'm going to double down. I'm going to go Sorbo as well. All right. All right. I'll go. I'll go something different. I I agree. It doesn't sound like Woods. I'll I'll just go Nugent. Turns out the tweet was smart enough for James Woods. The blog belongs to James Woods. Wow. Wow. How about that? Oh, my God. Mars Attacks own James Woods. (laughs) I should have known because I would watch him do like Instagrams from. He'd be like at his kitchen island, and the backsplash was a <laughs> staggered subway, three by six. Very tasteful, yeah. So OJ could be known. doing an IG live from <laughs> the murder scene, and you'd be like, that fucking tile. That's what I do, I just stare at tile. All right, the next tweet. If there's a meet, there's a meet and greet after the show, and for those who are, who are hanging out, you better pray they don't have tile. Because <laughs> we're, those are going to be no eye contacts right down at the ground. They're not going to buy merch. They're just going to show you photos of their home. Like, all right, how is this? Is this I'll okay? judge your tile. Yeah. All right. All right. Next one. Pumpkin, zu- pumpkin zucchini bread made and devoured. Check. White pumpkin smoke and black pepper candles made and burning. Check. Basic white girl autumn in full effect. Check. This is Gwyneth Paltrow making a new batch of her vagina candles. Yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> is it pop star Katy Perry? The fuck? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, Singer songwriter Leanne Rhymes. There you go. Pop mm. star Katy Perry mm. or Kansas City Chiefs super fan Taylor Swift? <laughs> oh. You know she put Travis know. Kelsey on the map, right? Wow. How I- dumb are her fucking fans? <laughs> Well, no, I'm sorry. I don't sorry, know if that's but a fight you want to fucking engage I, in. Yeah, Adam. That, well, I'll make I'll make racist jokes. I'm not going after Tay Tay. <laughs> well, put that on your tombstone. What yeah. I'm saying is, is there's a Sunday night football game and the ratings go up tenfold yeah. because she's up in the booth yeah. with his mom. Yeah. And but what I'm saying is, is they cut to her two or three times or eight times or yeah. ten times. But for a moment, she's not mic'd up. She doesn't even know she's being filmed. So you're oh, watching a three-hour foot. <laughs> well, I mean, what I mean is, is when they cut to her, yeah. she's not doing the shaka bra to the camera lens. Right. She's like hugging Kelsey's mom and looking at the game or whatever. You are a fan of hers. You have seen her many, many times. Why do you need to watch three hours of a game? Like, uh, uh, let's just put it to you this way. this way. I like Cheryl Ladd, ex Charlie's Angels. I love Cheryl Ladd. Yeah. I love her just as much as any Taylor Swift love fan loves Taylor Swift. But if you said to me, you must watch three and a half hours of soccer, on the off chance that we'll cut to a picture of Cheryl Ladd, I'd be like, I'm, I'm fucking out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. That's not a good enough ratio for me. And these Taylor Swift fans don't even like football, mm. so they have to watch three and a half hours of something they don't like just to see yeah. a picture of a person they see when they close their fucking eyes at night. I think Taylor Swift is an amazing, talented artist, and her fans are wonderful. <laughs> All right. The, the, You're right. <laughs> follow me. Brad's at right. Scab. At, 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 Funny Brad on Twitter. <laughs> you let's, changed since COVID, man. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's talk George Floyd. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, now I have opinions. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. But I'm not. But yeah, oh, but I'm okay. not going after Tate. No, All right. no, I'm not going after her. I'm not All going right. after Beyonce. Not going out. No. Katy no, Perry. No. This, this nope. is a perfect example of Katy Perry. I always say she looks like she's thinking of something stupid. <laughs> she looks like she just found out what a queef is. 
No? I mean, that's what I think. All right. Leanne's I'm, like, I know what it is. I, I'm, and Taylor's I, like, I don't even do it. You say Leanne Rhymes is on here. See, you go, why is Leanne Rhymes on here? But then how did Kevin well, I think Sorbo in, get on yeah. there? Yeah, I mean, country singers, I think, historically, have always been a fan of the seasons. I'm going to go Leanne Rhymes. Okay, because nice. uh, I, I don't think Taylor Swift's publishing team would allow her to tweet something like, oh, basic white girl fall is here. Any mention of race, they they would avoid. Uh, I'm go. I'm also going Leanne Rhymes for that reason. She's born the country era, so yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm going. I'm going Leanne. All right. I once had a Nyquil dream. I was going down on Katy Perry in a Guitar Center. Oh wow. Uh, wow! Which, by the way, should be their new commercial: the nighttime sniffling, seizing, coughing, stuffy at Fever, so you can eat out of Pop Star Medicine. Um, <laughs> Russell, uh, Russell, Russell's ex. Russell. Oh, Russell Brand. Yeah, Russell Brand's sure. ex-wife. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with uh, with KP. I think she um, I think she's a fan of I think she's uh, she's just a fan of um, of uh, you know candles, pumpkins, whatever the what what was the tweet about again? It looked uh, like a KP. It's tweet. academic. Here we go. Yeah. The tweet belongs to Leanne Rhymes. What there the fuck? Uh, yeah. On the board. This game's rigged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. This holiday season, please make sure that those who are meaningful to you know what they mean to you. If you can't show how much it means, because there are some of us that think we mean so much but feel meaningless by those that mean the most to us. So to my fans, I ain't shit without you. Facts. This was me on Edibles two weeks ago. I'm going to say we're taking a turn for the urban here. <laughs> and I ain't talking about Keith. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, great line. <laughs> great line. That deserved way more laughter. We'll edit in some more in Yeah, post. we'll yeah. punch it up. We'll sweeten it up in post. That was, wow. The holiday season. Yeah, I mean, I'm going vanilla ice. <laughs> well, I'll give you guys three choices okay. here. Is it Grammy-winning rapper 50 Cent? You're not even going to try to mix it up? <laughs> You can't even throw you're in a not, fucking uh, Britney you're, Spears' ex, Kevin Federline, just yeah. for shits and giggles. You're not going to throw on Jamie Kennedy. <laughs> I mean, just, All right, let me add Joey Fatone, for the love of God. Yeah. Somebody else. You know what? Let Anybody me throw a wild card in. Is it Bon Jovi? Yeah. <laughs> no, there it, you go. Uh, is it yeah, like 50 it. Cent? I told him, put Bill Engvall on yeah. there. <laughs> is it <laughs> Jeff Foxworthy, Elton John, <laughs> or Baron Trump? <laughs> <laughs> 50 Cent, hip hop icon Lil Wayne, or legendary hype man Flavor Flav. Oof. I mean, yeah, well, let's pull the audience, guys. That's what I thought. Well, I didn't see any clock emojis at the end of it. Oh, no clock emojis. So I don't know. I mean, who's the most, uh, like, you know, dialed into social media? That's my first question. I'd probably say. You know, 50's got his vitamin water. He's, you know, quite the brand mogul uh, guy, but yeah. I feel like Lil More Wayne is probably... Savvy. 50 had a pretty viral, viral tweet a few years ago where he's like, man, my mom's making me take out the trash. She sucks. Oh, and that was it. Fuck. <laughs> Here we are trying to craft jokes, and that's all we had to do. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I'm going Lil Wayne because I think... Of course you go with the little guy. Yeah, ah. Lil. Us Lil's gotta stick together. <laughs> so That's Lil up. Wayne, I'm Lil Brad, <laughs> Lil B-dubs. Wait, Brad, what was your DJ name in middle school? DJ Fourfoot. Wow. <laughs> Let's go. I was a DJ. <laughs> you scratching. were a DJ. Yeah, yeah. I was scratching CDs, but when I did it, they looked like records. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Old Joe, bringing it back. Bringing it back. <laughs> Points. Two turntables, a microphone, <laughs> and a booster check. <laughs> <laughs> that was his song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. All, All right. right. I'm going to uh, Flavor Flav. It's just too fucking fun. Look at that guy. Yeah, He's I just a good time. Yeah. I, I've eliminated, and, and listen, you guys tell me. I, it's not 50 cent. It's like 50, 50 cent, right? 50 cent. 50. You are so white right now. I saying 50 cent, right? 50. Yeah, it's 50. 50. 50. All right. 50, and, yeah. And, and Lil Wayne is Lil Wayne, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got yeah, it. Yeah, just Lil. Yep. No T's. Or you, Wheezy, you as the kids say. You had a little T in there. Yeah, no, that's Lil no, Wayne. L I L. Lil yeah, Wayne. I know. I know it. I've just heard a little. I heard a little. And little. it's scissor, not syrup. Yeah. Oh, syrup. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
By the way, black community, you're not allowed to make up words and then correct our pronunciation <laughs> of it. That's not fair. You decide to name your daughter Nachilla. That's not our fault. If we fuck a name that's those. never been said in human history before. You, you under, <laughs> it's, it's not on Whitey. You made up a word that's unsayable by white people. I think Beyonce is wonderful and her fans are very that's intelligent. Right. <laughs> that's Ed Funny Brad on Twitter. Yep, yep. All right. Uh, it feels a little Wayne to me, too. Okay. No. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh, yes, because Irvine knows a lot about oh, hip-hop yeah. culture. Yeah, you forgot where you are, Brad. Yeah, the, the mean streets of Irvine. Oh, you oh. have no idea. Jason Mraz got to start 45 miles from here. We only have one hot tub in our gated community. I know where all the Paneras are. <laughs> I, I passed on the way in. I saw the old parking lot filled with the 66 with the dubs on them. Sure. And, uh, the full airbags and the fronts all lifted up. So I, I know you guys know your hip-hop Absolutely. Hip -hop world. Irvine's the mean streets, man. I'm going a little. I'm flavor. Lil Wayne. The tweet belongs to Lil Wayne. Yes! Who knows black people? We know black people. That's right. Going on a yeah. t shirt. What now? Right. What's the score here? Brad is up by one. You have two, Brad has three. Hell Brad, yeah. Brad got three? I got three. Same wow. number of feet I am tall. Yeah. Una mas? All right, one more. Okay. All right. This I one's worth, uh, let's say, four, so I can have a chance to come from <laughs> okay, Yeah, I like that. All right, this one's worth 12. All right, here we go. Just to recap, the Republican Party, the party of small government and freedom, is banning abortion, banning gender-affirming care for trans people, banning books, banning drag entertainment, and prohibiting teachers from teaching the history of our country. Well, I tweeted this while I was on Ambien. Dr. <laughs> Phil, you did what? Yeah, I tweeted this while I was on, on Ambien. Uh-huh. Which is not, you know, in classic Roseanne fashion, I just said, fuck it. I'm going to take a lot of drugs and get online. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of neutral as far as uh, anything political, but, uh, but I remember typing this out verbatim. <laughs> wow. Uh, Brad? <laughs> We're against, I, I love all the fucking, I, I love the hijacking of the English language these pussies do. Like, we're against gender affirming care. Yeah, you got a cock and balls, we'll call you a dude. That's how, that's how we roll. Uh, you guys want to cut everyone's tits off. That's, that makes you fucking heroes. I, I do, I like when they get the language and they can't call it, uh, well, we're against turning 14-year-old dudes into 14-year-old chicks and having, having them regret it for the rest of their fucking lives or pumping them full of fucking uh, blocking agents or something so they never sprout their first pube. Yeah, that, uh, by the way, that's gonna work. That's gonna work. Your body is attempting to transition into becoming an adult with all that goes on and all the hormones and all the shit that goes on, and then we're gonna give you puberty blockers and you can just take this fucking medicine and that shit's never gonna kick in. Oh, that, there's gonna be no consequences to that when you're in your 60s. It's gonna work out fucking perfectly. I love Clay Aiken and his fans are very intelligent. <laughs> Gender affirming care. <laughs> so like, this is what they do. They grab the language and then they twist it and then you seem like an asshole because you're into burning books and not affirming people's genders, right? They did this, they've done it for a long time. Like, remember when uh, Hobby Lobby did not provide birth control pills for their employees? All they did was not provide them. Uh, and then they said that Ho Hobby Lobby was um, preventing their, their employees from having access to birth control. Mm. So, to be fair, if you work at a Hobby Lobby putting together model planes, nobody wants to fuck you. You're not gonna get laid. Yeah, right. you're good. That's birth control right well, there. What I would say... <laughs> wow, DJ Forfoot with that, a hard take. <laughs> I have Man. employees... <laughs> I do not... Model train. I do not provide lunch from them, but I do not deny them access to lunch they want to fucking buy themselves. So the difference of denying access to lunch and not providing a hot buffet every fucking day, you retards. All right. 
Who is this going to be? All right, is it? From the hit film Con Air, John Cusack. Okay. Our governor, Gavin Newsom. God, this or, audience really loves Skittles. Or from Who's the Boss, Alyssa Milano. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Alyssa Milano is awesome. True story, awesome. the first time I masturbated was to Alyssa Milano. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, really? but, I, yeah <laughs> but I waited until she was 18. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, you know, the first time I masturbated was to Alyssa Milano. Oh, Tony Danza. Yeah, it was on set during a, uh, well, I was teaching her how to read, but I couldn't hold back. Too soon? Yeah, I was first season of Who's the Boss, so yeah. that's kind of Yeah, people me. don't remember. There was a lot of, uh, you know, you could kind of do what you wanted back then. TV was different. She's yeah. in a great movie called Embrace of the Vampire, and by a great movie, I mean she's naked in half of it. Oh, man. It's fucking amazing. Well, oh, the she memories. she lies down with her young girl every night in her bed and weeps openly for her future, so that kid's going to have a fucking eating disorder. <laughs> Newsom is a guy who looks like he puts brill cream on his teeth, right? He's just a fucking sleazy That's so fucking bull good. bullshit. He's a total bullshit art. Yeah, he looks uh, like he, he looks like he wipes his butt after he pees. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded funny in my head. I'm glad you reciprocated. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Kusak has gone insane. Has he really? That sucks. I, he, he really has actor. gone insane. Because this could be Kuzak. Mm. But Kuzak or Cusack? Coupon or coupon? Cusack, Kuzak. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and Gavin Newsom says this kind of shit all the time. Like, first off, uh, book bannings. Does anyone not have access to a fucking book in 2023? You can go online and buy any book you fucking want. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, 11-year-olds need to hear about guys being mounted from behind without lube, you know? How else are they going to come? The funniest... The, That's the, Ed Funny Brad on Twitter. The funniest... <laughs> we're in an era right now, which is high comedy, because what it is is uh, guys like Gavin Newsom call everyone, you know, they want to basically say, you know, your freedoms are being taken away and there's books being banned and stuff like that. And these books are fine and they should be in libraries in junior high. And then at some point, some 86-year-old Republican Strom Thurmond type gets up there in front of Congress and he goes, you think it's okay for 11-year-old to read this book? Let me read you a couple of pages from chapter seven. <laughs> he pulled out his throbbing unit. Hold on, I'm almost hard. <laughs> Covered it with margarine and got a running start at Jeremy's asshole. <laughs> then the Democrat chick will chime in and go, oh, no, 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 you can't read that. You can't read that kind of filth in here. And then he'll go, exactly, bitch. That's what I'm saying. But it's awesome. There's tons of footage of old Republicans reading scat porn in front of Congress. It's a, you look it up. It's, it's, I will. All right. It's Cancel see, my weekend. It's plan. awesome. If you go back to the tweet, I believe there was a lot of, like, the, yeah, the caps lock at the very bottom line. I think that's the tell. Because mm -hmm. I don't think Gavin Newsom does the caps lock. Mm, like, wow. cause, cause, so, and I can't go against Alyssa, because like I said, first, first woman I ever masturbated to. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to Cusack. Mm -hmm. For, right. that, for could, that reason. It could very well be Cusack. I think, yeah, the, liber the ironically liberal use of caps lock, I think it says it's Cusack. Adam, how say you? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Again, Gav looks like I bought coke from him, from him in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> and Kuzak, oh, fuck, it's tough for me to go against him because I do love him in films, but uh, now I am hearkening right? back to some tweets that looked a little, uh, a little mm -hmm. wild, so I think we're going to go uh, full Uno on Kuzak on this one. Okay. And I'm sorry, Adam, who did you say? I got Gavin. Okay, the tweet belongs to Alyssa Milano. Oh! No! No! My first yeah. love! No! DJ Fourfoot wins. Oh, no. I do win, though. Brad's right. the winner. Wow, congrats. Drop the balloons. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, the Jordan Harbinger Show. 
Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will, too. So you can search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That is H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, I don't know if you guys know, but it's See Better Drive Safer Month, now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. They have Put a spotlight on items to help you see the road more clearly. All month long, receive gift cards after rebate on select wiper blades and bulbs. If your wiper blades are streaking and smearing, well, they're worn out and they need to be replaced. But good news, you can get up to a $20 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with purchase of select wiper blades. Their professional parts people will install your new wiper blades and they'll do it for free. See the road better with new bulbs. Get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with the purchase of Sylvania Silver Star Ultra or select ZXE Twin Pack Bulbs. They'll even help you pick out the right bulb for your vehicle. Visit your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for details. O Rewards members receive two times O Rewards points on select bulbs, and up to four times points on cleaning supplies for your vehicle. Don't miss the See Better, Drive Safer month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. All right, so you're going to pull these balls out? Is that going to be your job? You You want me to do it? You want to put it here? All right. Now we got got the bingo hopper. All right. You guys all wrote your one word. On there, for uh, Adam can spin it. I don't know. I don't know if it's that direction or I think it's the other direction. Yeah, go counterclock. There we go. We got one. All right. All right. First word up. By the way, let's get some energy back in the room. Come huh? on, you guys yeah. fired up? Yeah. New game. Who this? Yeah. First word up. Voodoo. No one knows the voodoo that you do. <laughs> Salt and pepper? Did we just do that? <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh, we're so fucking white. <laughs> Vo- Voodoo was a thing when I was young. It, and, and, and it wasn't, you know, if, if you said magic or warlock or sorcerer, people go, get the fuck out of here. But if you go voodoo, they go, okay, I'm listening. Because there seemed to be some yeah. science, some, like, cultural science every, behind like, the voodoo. S- every 70s sitcom would always have a voodoo episode. Yeah, they had when the Brady Bunch went to Hawaii. Who the fuck remembers that? <laughs> this fucker. Oh, this guy. Okay. Of course, Irvine. Greg got bam, hold. Bam, 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 bam. Greg got hold oh, of a sorry. voodoo little statue thing that brought him bad luck, and you yeah. know, he had bad luck because he fell off a two-foot wave, and they cut to commercial. And everyone was concerned. Oh. But voodoo wasn't exactly a hard science, but it didn't live in the fantasy world of, you know, Sasquatch and gnomes and, and Pegasus and shit. They used shit. Like, voodoo had tools. Like, they'd go, all right, look, we're not just going to come in here and start waxing poetic. I brought chicken bones. <laughs> and then people would go, like, well, go the guy's on. got chicken bones. <laughs> so you know he knows what he's talking about. And... There was a lot of curses. I mean, I think I think the way that voodoo would work is you would much rather a witch, a warlock, or a sorcerer fuck with you because they don't really exist. Whereas voodoo, yeah. and I don't know where I don't know what it emanates from. Maybe Haiti. I feel like any life coach on Instagram probably has dabbled in voodoo, right? Yes. By the yeah. way, you ever notice how life coaches are like always like the people that are the most fucked up? They're like, hey man, I had 50, 15 DUIs, but I'm gonna tell you how to start your business. <laughs> that guy, the guy you're Come on, talking trust about. Me, give me 10K, let's go to fucking Napa next weekend. You're, the guy you're talking about that I hate is fucked up guy who's got advice now, but he's the dates guy. He goes, uh, 
I buried my oldest son, May 26, 1989. Always throwing the fucking dates out yeah, to your I mean, face, and then he tells you the year he got divorced, and then the year he got sober, and then the year his dog died. All right. Voodoo sucks. Let's get a new one. Oh <laughs> Who wrote Voodoo? Hey, you voodoo get the Donut, fuck out though, is delightful. Yeah. It is. Thank you. And Voodoo guys are scary, but Voodoo chicks are hot. Yeah. Because sure. they're always wearing next to nothing. There's a snake involved. They're always oiled up and dancing. Well, here's my last question Where does Voodoo fall in the ranks of like magic, psychic, Voodoo? You know? Because I've, you know, psychics, I think, are. are Psychics are full of shit unless they're talking about you. Yeah. In which case, you're all fucking ears. All right. And, and they never, all they do is you do all the fucking psychic work. The psychic, psychics don't actually do any work. They just go, ah, I'm getting a T. Is there a T? Is there a T somewhere? And they go, my my brother's name was Ted. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. That, this is like one of those fucking Korea bar, Korean barbecue places. I'll just drop off some meat and raw vegetables. I'll come back with the fucking check. Yeah. You do all the fucking cooking. It's a, it's the color me mine. Of, I'm sorry. I'd like a completed ashtray. Can I purchase one of those? No, you got to make it yourself. Here. And that's what these fucking dudes, you do all the work. They yeah. sit around and they go, and then they say stuff to dumb chicks all the time. They go, uh, there's a part of you that you show the outside world. There's another part of you that you keep to yourself. And they go, oh my God, that's me. Yeah, I don't walk around in my underpants with a Klan's hood on. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't. There's a part that I keep my, and then they fuck, they fuck all the chicks up too, because they always go, you're super creative. But your job right now just doesn't fully explore. And you're like, yes, I, I love interpretive dance, but I work at a postal sorting center in Arlita. Yes, yes, that's me. You're a little bit of a chocoholic. Oh my God, I love chocolate. <laughs> I came in eating a Reese's. Sometimes you, know? you eat a little too much and then you beat yourself up about it, but yeah. it's okay. Mercury's in retrograde and that's why uh, your emotions are out of sync with the fire moon. Yeah, or they, you're bipolar, Denise. They say shit like this too. I mean, they literally go like, and you're, your grandmother, she was close to you, right? Yeah, and she's she's not here anymore. Right, I'm 63, right, bitch? <laughs> right, that would make her 128, okay. Smart, good good call on her not being here. I, I used a stroke cane to get in here. Yes, my grandmother's gone. She, she fought the Civil War, that's right. She was a nurse in the Civil War, right? I said that, and you said she's gone. And then they do things where they go, at the end, she was struggling for breath. Like, they literally say that. Oh, yeah, mean, I saw her in the yeah. hospital. She was hooked up to the fucking... Yeah, that's what 96-year-olds do. <laughs> yeah. she Struggle wasn't to breathe. Yeah, she wasn't impaled by a javelin. It just went out. Oh, like... she was killed in Acapulco cliff diving. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew psychics were bullshit when back in junior high, I called I call one of the psychic hotlines, and they're like, ooh, you sound tall, dark, and handsome. I'm like, nope. Well, I'd be nope, nope, and nope. Yeah, 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 it would yeah. just be one. One nope's not enough to cover that shit, Brad. I exactly. Can't. All right, word number that's, two. That's a hat trick of nope. <laughs> yeah. Dark and if they, add, if they added rich, there'd be four nopes. Yeah. All right. Back then. Uh, <laughs> this could be the name of, uh, if I ever uh, have a kid, this could be a potential first name. Okay. Taint. Taint. Taint Ray? Come on. It's a race Tate driver. Ray, yeah, that guy's oh. at Talladega. <laughs> that fucking laying down track times right now. Tate Ray, bump drafting and right down the fucking front straight at Talladega. Hey, do you see TR's time? Oh, Tate Ray, you kidding you... me? All right, Tate is the space between your, your balls and your assholes. That's see, your everyone always yeah. says that with a question mark. But it is, right? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, come on. Yeah, you, you're, you're not gay just because <laughs> you know what a taint is. It's, it's that... It's All I that, know is I need three mirrors to see it. Yes. Prove it. Or one guy <laughs> named Amir. <laughs> one <laughs> Lebanese dude. Amir K., where is also, he? Yeah. Named Goulash. Can also, can also find it. Uh, yeah, I... I 
actually just uh, tonight did a little trimming down in that. A little taint trim? I did a little taint trim. and uh, Taint trim sounds like a skateboard trick from the 90s. Taint trim. Tony Hawk is the only guy who can taint trim. He did a kickflip and then a double taint trim. <laughs> Show me the video. <laughs> And I don't even, I, I think taint, I think the definition of taint is, well, it taint your asshole and it taint your ball sack. I think that's a sort of trucker's thing. Do you, have, do, do, do you have the taint friend that's just like, dude, have you ever had a girl like tickle your taint? Fuck yeah, man. I don't. I've got that friend and he's sitting right there. <laughs> You've had a taint tickler? No, he's doing a bit. I, uh, I am not. I will go on record. I, hey, no, he's hey, doing but, a bit. I've never been to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, let's just segue into uh, from taint to butt play. I mean, you know, Listen, I know Irvine is the capital of England, I, but like, I don't, is there? I don't require or need the butt, butt play, but I love where your head's at. Yeah. I really do. I like where your fucking sure. head's at. Trust your gut. Follow your heart. I'll but pass get the fuck on out the butt there. play, but now I know I could probably get a Denver omelet in the morning <laughs> because you're just amenable to things. You know what I mean? Not taking the garbage out. Yeah, you said yeah. You say yes. Hey, we're taking the hey, appreciate the butt play. I'm just saying when you're taking the garbage out, put a put a put a cut of carnauba wax on the on the Audi, would you, sweetheart? I like butt play. It's, it's sort of like pierced tongue. It says open for business, you know what I mean? Like sure. it says, I will go there and do that. I knew a guy who told me he licked a girl's butt before they even made out, and he's sitting to Dude, right. I, was, yeah. I told you that in confidence. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got too much hair down there for... Oh yeah? My, I used to tell Dr. Drew all the time that my, my asshole looks like Santa Claus's mouth. He was like, I just asked you what you wanted for lunch. Why'd you change the topic Tell so my quickly? Santa story. Because we're in December. <laughs> oh, let's get another one. Uh, it's taint season. <clears throat> Fauci. Fauci. I don't know if you have any thoughts on him, do you? Yeah. I think you're going to be pretty right, much short on this. You never mentioned him before. All right, all right. I got, I, I got a mar marginal rant on Fauci. They're going to find out a bunch of fucking lab leak shit with him, and he's going to be fucked up. Uh, but it's not him. It's everyone who supported him and made the stupid uh, St. Fauci candles and the cupcakes. Did and, you see my pillows? And, and everything else. They had Fauci pillows. They had Fauci pillows. pillows. Not the my pillow guy, but no, that's uh, yeah. a different one. You can cut a hole in it and fuck it. <laughs> yeah, Fauci pillows. You have to. Here's what I. Here's what I want to say. Is that, is that your Fauci? <laughs> no, that was Lindell. Oh, I sound a little Fauci. It's, By the way, it's also a little Nick Cage in there. Oh. <laughs> is, I, I, is, the, is that your Fauci? Sounds like something a woman says to a man when his dick is too small. Is that your Fauci? <laughs> Why? Because it's just a little prick. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Wow. Okay. okay. I here's professional here's, comedian. I, I professional. Would, I would say this really about this, uh, this entire era. Fauci <laughs> wants everyone to get vaccinated, right? Uh, and then the whole story comes out as oh, the people that aren't being vaccinated are the Trump supporters and the Republicans and you know uh, Ted Nugent, right? So. <laughs> They're the ones who aren't being vaccinated. And that's the group they needed to get the message to. So Fauci, and he, he's, he, he was just being sanctimonious, but Fauci's like, all oh, these people, and Biden is all those guys, these Trump voters, these Trump supporters. Blah, 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 blah. Why are you on Rachel Maddow's show for the 66th night in a row, you fucking coward? Why are you preaching to the converted? All your people are the good people, and they all got vaccinated. So why the fuck would you go on MSNBC and tell everyone to get vaccinated who's already been triple vaxxed? Go the fuck on Hannity, go to Fox, go on Tucker Carlson's show, and get all their unwashed deplorables, and go on there and make your fucking case to Tucker Carlson's audience. By the way, Tucker Carlson has 10 times the audience that... Who, host fucking du jour on CNN has, but Fauci, who's a man of science, is too big a chicken shit to go on his show because somebody might disagree with him, somebody may push back at him, and someone may do something other than what Rachel Maddow would do, which is suck his fucking miniature Italian balls. 
and that's how you know he's a lying sack of shit. Because if you're just a man of science, you're, I mean, hypothetical, all you are is a man of science. You're nonpartisan. All you want to do is save people, Educate. and you believe heavily in the vaccine. And I say to you, there's a show that gets 10 times the ratings and has 10 times the vax deniers that anyone who watches Rachel Maddow has, and you only go on the shows that have a smaller audience with people that are triple vax. That means you're not intellectually honest, it means you're not into saving Americans, and it means you're a fucking coward. Yeah. Now, Adam, I, I love Fauci's music, and I think his fans are very intelligent. You're thinking of Yanni. Tell us how you really feel. By the way, I didn't get Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson. I went to Costco and got the Kirkland brand vaccine. Oh! Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, all right, next word. No, we got another one. Some of these suck. What's that? <laughs> no, what'd you say, though? She said, she said Fauci again. Oh, gotcha. She almost came last time. Yeah. She's like, almost there. Just keep, just, just keep going. T talk more shit about Fauci. Am I touching it? Am I touching it? Is that it? By the way, I was... Is that your taint? I was early My money safe word is Wuhan. Again. Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> funny, Brad. That's Ed Funny Brad on Twitter. Yeah, there you go. All right, this one's... Oh, fuck. I mean, come on. All right. The day you all should have known Fauci was compromised is when he got hauled up in front of Congress like two and a half years ago, and they said no gatherings, no ball games, no churches, no stadiums, no nothing. And he was like, nope, shouldn't be getting together in groups or crowds. How about Black Lives Matter? How about a Black Lives Matter rally? And he's like, I, I, what, what? I don't have any thoughts about that. When highly educated people who never stop fucking talking have no thoughts about something, they're lying or they're compromised. And I saw that three years ago and I was like, I told Dr. Drew this fucker's compromised. And Drew's like, oh, Fauci's a good guy. Wait till we hear the rest of the story with Fauci and, and the lab and gain of function. It's all, right. all coming down the pike. Man, we go, we go from Fauci to something else involving needles, acupuncture. Acupuncture, anyone had acupuncture? Oh yeah, I, I have. I don't, I don't know that it's... I was six foot four, and then and I got then acupuncture. Pow, and all the air yeah, came out. just popped me like a fucking balloon. <laughs> don't do it, guys. Shit can happen. What if that, what if that was fucking real? <laughs> and nobody people, said anything. <laughs> people use it to quit smoking. Yeah. Sure. Right? It's got range. It's got range. Yeah. And, and it's such bullshit, too, because it's like... I'm gonna shove this needle in your spine. But first, what do you wanna do? Stop procrastinating? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, you wanna stop using the N-word in public. All right, I got a needle for that. Yeah. Right this way, Papa John. <laughs> That's right, this way. <laughs> He's like, I only said it once. It's like, oh, you wanna quit smoking? Like, uh, or, uh, there, or, oh, you, you, you get too much, uh, you pit out when you're, you're in public and get too much flop sweat? We'll just go ahead and do this. I don't think it does anything. Uh, I do, I think it's kind of been replaced by cupping. You know what the cupping one sure. is? Yeah, I get that. Uh, you like cupping? I, well, I don't like it, but it helps my back. Oh, it does? Yeah, I think so. But it, but it, Let but me it, ask you something with cupping. Do you yeah. get a discount? <laughs> but, no, yeah, it's I'm like asking. Six cups, right? No, what I'm saying is like you have a car wash, you charge extra for vans. Yeah. Well, this is the same argument not as yeah. many cops not right. there as long mini well, cooper for that's, the that's right that, that's right that and they and they use a certain type of cup for you for me they just use sippy cups <laughs> <laughs> he's a mini cupper yeah he's a sippy cupper or thimbles from monopoly yeah. i will say yeah. this here's what i want to say <laughs> if you're going to get the cups I do it. Yeah. the cups leave the black and white or black and blue yeah. mark yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. i'm fucking tired of watching mma guys walk into the octagon with all the weird fucking cup marks yes. on their back you want to fight you want to fight with your shirt off. I don't care if it's boxing. I don't care if it's MMA. If you go cup, you got to go full cup so you're one uniform color. I love that. Cup every fucking square inch or only cup black dudes. I'm okay with that. that that's all. The fucking Irish guys who go in there with that fucking pink skin and they do the weird sporadic cup and there's like a swastika of cupping on. By the way, if I was a cupper and I got an Irish guy for fucking sure, I'd be like, oh, you're a little... 
Oh, no, I know what I'm doing. Uh, let me see. Some of you thought you wouldn't see Adam Carolla mime cupping a swastika mime tonight, and you were wrong. You were fucking wrong. You were fucking wrong. That's on you. Drink, drink four. I would <laughs> definitely mime cup. I wouldn't be able to resist if Conor McGregor was laying face down. By the way, down. Oh, yeah. that was the first title of Hitler's book, Mine Cup. Mine Cup. Yeah. <laughs> That's at Funny Brad on Twitter. That's right. Yeah. All right, next ball. All right, one Mine more, cup. one more ball. Oh wow. Um. All right. I'm gonna let someone let uh, somebody say this one, sir. Oh, it's the N word. <laughs> oh, Brad, what's your name, man? Chris. What do you do here in Irvine? Uh, I work for Frito Lay. Fuck yeah. All right. Thank you for your service. So is your son a chip off the old block? <laughs> Wait, Brad, one more time. I, I said, so is your son a chip off the old block? That's at Funny oh, Brad yeah. on Twitter. All right, there All you right. go. All right, read this one for me, Dad bud. Dad jokes galore. Ain't no Fisher. Yeah. That is now, a first wait, round draft pick if I in, ever heard one. Was she in Star Wars? She was. <laughs> Ain't no Fisher. She's Zendaya's acting coach. Rest in peace. She's gonna be missed. <laughs> Um, all right, I have, I have Anal story. Fisher, that's a brand new Pornhub category. <laughs> yeah, well, Is all it right. Fisher or Fissure? It's Fissure, I think. Yeah. Like, like, like a fault line, right? Yeah. A anal fishing is another sport altogether. <laughs> that's it's an ESPN 12. ESPN 12 <laughs> after 2 a.m. You see a lot of the My Pillow Guys commercials during the anal fishing championship. <laughs> hey, I got a new anal fissure pistol. By the way. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> makes catfish noodling guys look like complete amateur uh, hour. Pussies. This is nothing compared. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned after cornhole. <laughs> Anal fissure. Um, all right. I, I've, I've talked to Dr. Drew about this. And here's the deal, and here's the problem. And I think <laughs> we need to put this uh, to rest for a second, which is... Everything to do with your asshole is funny to everybody, but is the most painful thing you can ever go through. When you're having trouble with the asshole, that's your center, that's your core. Yeah. That is, that is your GPS, that's your guidance, that's, it, it is. I often use it as a GPS. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is. I fart to the wind and wherever that goes, I go. That's your gyroscope and your compass. You can have a fucking busted hand and play an NFL football game. Yeah. Sure. Your fucking anus is fucked up. You can't walk from the bed to the toilet without falling over. Oprah has called in sick for diarrhea. Oh, she has? Yeah. Let's oh, get her on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> call her up. No, but I'm just saying, the, uh, you know, it's creating problems for everybody. Yeah, so the problem is, is it fucking, it's the worst thing ever, and then everyone laughs because it has to do with your asshole. Yes. By the way, I learned yesterday on a game show that I was doing, uh, funny you should ask, Byron Allen uh, creation, um, that everyone's asshole has a distinct fingerprint, not per se, although ladies, I love the thought. A Stanford scientist figured out that your asshole is as unique to you as your fingerprints. Now, I don't know how bored this guy was and how long he had in the morgue. Welcome, Dano. That's right. <laughs> but we're all, your assholes are like snowflakes, is what I'm saying. None one the same. Don't believe me? Let's have the first five people step up here. Yeah. Right now. Let me get my jeweler's loop. So, now I'm old fashioned. Let's just get printed. You, you know, yeah. if I ever get arrested, just go ahead and print me yeah. rather than shove a, a cotton swab up my asshole and rub it on a piece of paper. But what, I, what I'm saying is, is your asshole is its own unique fingerprint. Isn't that crazy? That is a, that, that is a crazy stat that's, that's, I'm going to definitely bring up in church. And, and then what? led this guy to pursue that. What was his hypothesis? And he's like, I think this needs more investigation. Yeah, and who funded this? Was it a, a generous grant from the Hershey Foundation? George Soros, he's in Soros, everything. Soros, that's so Fucking Soros! I fucking knew he was behind, yeah. behind this shit. <laughs> 
So he wants your asshole print. <laughs> let's not make fun of people with their asshole pain because one day we'll be old and we'll have our own asshole pain and we'll want a certain amount of sympathy. I think is so. What, is what I'm saying. All right, one more ball. Let's do one let's do more. It. One more ball is what... Whoop, there we go. Cool. Uh, Brad, thoughts? Another ball? Oh. Oh boy! Another ball? Uh, nah. Let let's see let's let's see where this goes. How about I put, do one more and then we'll we'll, we'll decide. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about we read both and we'll let the audience pick. Yeah. All, right. All right. Yeah. How about that? Or or we combine them. I love that. All right. My man, you want to read this one? What's your name? Ray. And where are you from? Orange. City of Orange. Orange County. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> What's your name? He kept saying it like he doesn't believe me. I better Sarah, say it three more times. January 6th. Great. So we've got January 6th. And what's your name? Mm -hmm. Heather, where are you from? Dana Point. Mm -hmm. Great. What do you do, Heather? HR. For who? PNP Imports. I think you just made that up. Heather, can you read this? <laughs> Ovulating. So we've got ovulating and January 6th. Let's combine them <laughs> for one big... <laughs> Fucking you guys ever do any session. in vitro stuff like inducement stuff or did you have your kid organically naturally yeah, yeah. we uh we uh my wife grew herself and wow. uh yeah didn't, didn't 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 have to be like how how was i made daddy and i get to actually say yeah me and my wife you know me and your mom we we we, we made love and made you it's not like ah oh, well i jerked off into a cup and yeah. Got a got got a super soaker and I, shot it into her hoo ha. I had, I had to Easy do show, the I, I, I had to do the cup jerk thing. You did. Yeah, that's how I got. What porn twins. did you jerk off to? Well, first off, I had to be stoic. There was two things about it. Like okay. they offer you a wicker basket of '80s porn, and I had to pretend to be shocked and appalled. Like what? No, what? You know I have an imagination, right? Why are these two naked ladies hugging? I don't... What'd you call them again? Now, what are some of the titles? Who's Christy Canyon? I've never heard of her. <laughs> 80 porn titles went are always so funny. to high school with her. I, I, I waved off the basket. You did. Okay. Well, I also... You know, I, I feel like the basket for, like, a world-class jacker would be, like... Showing up at the bowling alley and they put the pads in the gutters. I'm gotcha. like, get this shit out of here. That makes sense. I got my own fucking shoes and wrist brace. Yeah. I mean, for jacking off. That wasn't even a bowling analogy. <laughs> I'm saying I brought my wrist brace and my jack off shoes. <laughs> you for sure have a jack off. You thought I was still talking about you? bowling that, at this point. That's yeah. what hokas are, is their fucking jack off shoes. Custom bag. <laughs> yeah. Shirt, my initials emblazoned in it. Oh you know. my God. Yeah. By the way, how insulting is it where they like they they bring you a basket of porn that's like all '80s porn? You're like, I have a fucking phone. Oh, this is pre. I think this is pre porn on the. This is like flip phone. Oh, okay. Era, well, you know? yeah, but which one of us hasn't jerked off to the game Snake? <laughs> so uh, I go in text. there. Fucking you know, that's first Ed things Funny first. You know, I gotta I gotta say this to everyone who has a fucking odd job. Um, it's really weird and uncomfortable to everyone who comes in. To you, it's a fucking Wednesday. You don't, yeah. you don't give a shit. Like, I couldn't be a coroner because I would freak out, but if you do it every day for 30 years, and it's no big whoop to you, yeah, no. and you work at the Jack Clinic, you have to have a certain decorum, Is that you know? what it's called? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> right next to the Jack in the Box. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't get them confused. <laughs> and that's how we got our ranch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, Brad, the, that felt scripted. That was good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I went in there, nice and the, material. First, the first thing I noticed <coughs> as a carpenter is when you, when I, no, hold on. The tile at the Jack Clinic? <laughs> any fucking building, any apartment you've been in, any home you've ever bought, any commercial building that had thick pile carpet that they tore out and replaced with, like, you know, adhesive squares, 
always has undercutting on the fucking door. The clearance is two and a half inches because it scraped the shag carpet, but they pulled up the padding and they pulled up the carpet and that put tile squares on there now. But that means every sound from inside of that room just goes jetting out to everyone in General Pop on the other side. General Pop is my gay porn name, by the way. So, <laughs> I... <laughs> Waved off the basket. Sure. You know, I gave him the, I gave him the tut tut. Please, who yeah. gave him with there? Obviously, I got the, I got the wrist brace and the jack shoes. Called and the I, lefty. I, I go, <laughs> I go in there. I shut the door, and I belt one out in like 85 seconds. You know, but now I'm thinking that was too fast. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, to romanticize the making yeah. of your child, yeah. Yeah, I don't want. It was literally like I'd walk through a turnstile and, <laughs> and, and I walked through a turnstile and a, came, uh, came back into a the hotel. Simpson meme. Yeah, it's like it's like I left the hotel, walked through the turnstile, and walked back in the lobby of the hotel with a cup of gin. <laughs> that's what that that's what it would have taken. So that's in the promo video for the Jack Clinic. <laughs> so I I I put. I thought, Hi, I'm Adam Grohl of the Jack Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> what would a normal person do in this situation? Like, how long mm. would I wait? I don't want to wait too long. That's another kind of sure. kind of judgment. Yeah, what's the uh, I guess what's the time frame we're looking at? Probably uh, three to six minutes. I just hummed the song "Take on Me" by Uh Huh. There you go. And I thought, that's a sufficient yeah. amount of time. Once it hits sure. the third chorus, it's time to nut. Right, right. Because also you Oh, no, I'd, I'd pre nut it. Oh. Now you're just no, walking I'd, out. No, I'd nut it. I just didn't want to walk out looking like a it's fucking so fast, yeah. insane person. So yeah. I sat in there now and let me, waited. Let me ask you this. If they said, we have no porn, but we only have one song for you to make, uh, for you to come into this cup, and they said, and they turned it on and it was talk dirty to me, what would you do? <laughs> I'd say coming to a headband. <laughs> not only am I not beaten off, I'm not having kids at all. <laughs> I'm going gay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the saddest part is, you know, doctors lie. They lie to you all the time, and they make fucking rules, and chicks don't understand it because they make they have rules, and there's rules for beating off into a cup that have that that are the following. One is is like if you're getting oral surgery at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday, they go. No liquids, no solids after midnight. Nothing, nothing after midnight. Nothing after midnight. If you're getting oral surgery at three in the afternoon on a Tuesday, they go, nothing after midnight. I'm like, I bought myself nine hours, bitch. You said nothing after midnight for an 8 a.m. oral surgery, and then six years later, it was oral surgery at three in the afternoon, and you still said nothing after midnight? That ain't fucking science. Yeah. So they lie. They just lie to you all the time. And the thing about making your sample into a cup is you can do it at home. You can do it in the safety, privacy, and sanctuary of your own home, but not if you live more than 20 minutes away. And I was like, I, I live like 25 minutes away. And they're like, no go, which is bullshit because it's probably good for an hour. But they say 25, and I said, I'll do in a commuter mug, and I'll fucking haul ass. It's got a lid. Yeah. I'll zap it in the microwave. Do it in a Yeti cup. It'll keep it cold. I'll hit the Yeti cup yeah. again this week, coincidentally. <laughs> and I'll fucking drive over here like uh, uh, Taint Parker. <laughs> what was your NASCAR? Taint guys? Ray. Taint, Taint Ray. Ray. Sorry, Taint Ray. <laughs> yeah. How dare you... Le le legendary NASCAR <laughs> racer, Tate <laughs> Ray. And they're like, no, you gotta, you gotta do it, you gotta do it here. And I always thought, um, and, and by the way, when, when the wife is like ovulating or an egg is dropping or a fallopian tubing is being tied to a sheep shank knot or whatever goes on Anal fissuring. down there, yeah. that's your time to move. Yeah. And so it's like you're on the clock, go over there and rub one out. And I did, and it was, it was good, but I got a little full of myself, and I celebrated by spiking the cup. Right <laughs> <laughs> and then I did the throat slit thing, yeah, yeah. and then I took my helmet off, and I got ejected from the game. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out tonight. I do, do appreciate it, and put your hands together.
for Adam Ray. And Brad Williams. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla saying, Mahalo.